eighth presentation that we made. We have another one to make tonight at 6, and we have another one Saturday morning at uh, 8.30 uh, at the Methodist Church. And then after that, we have six more to go. It'll be a total of about 30 presentations. So we are doing our best to get the word out there about our bond proposition. Now, let me... Let me just go ahead and this is just some of the pictures that you know that we put on our cover page. But let me tell you where we are on this bond. Back in 2009, Mr. Holcomb, when he became our superintendent, he and I began to look at some facility needs, some facility issues. And so we developed a list and decided that we need to do something to address our facilities, including this building right here. And I will talk to you about your building in just a moment. But in the meantime, as we made our list, we realized that we needed to open Capital Elementary back up, and it was vacated at that time. But we needed to renovate it and, mod and remodel it. And so we, uh, when the board approved us to do that, and in 2010, in April 2010, we started that process, and then we were completed by August 1st and moved into that building. If you haven't been to Capital, you'd be amazed at how pretty that building is, and what the new lighting did, new electrical, new plumbing. Uh, but there were some things we didn't get to complete because we didn't have any more money out of fund balance to spend on it, and we took off used fund balance to do that project. And I'll show you capital in just a little bit. Uh, Mr. Holcomb and I went around, and we even came over here and talked to y'all about uh, what your needs are. And so from our list, we've been, we began to develop what we needed to do in Level N ISD and what we need to do to remodel and renovate and up modernize and upgrade all of our facilities, including painting, carpeting, uh, new lights, new electrical, new plumbing, uh, ADA accessibility issues, and I'll talk more about those in just a moment. We hired an architect back in July, an architectural firm. It's Park Hill, Smith & Cooper. They're out of Lubbock. They do a lot of school renovations and remodeling and new construction. Well, for Mr. Holcomb's in my list, they took the list, and they just began the process of looking to see what it would cost us. And originally, they came up with a, a $30.7 million package for the whole district, 13 facilities. But they told us from the beginning, this is a moving target. This is, this is going to go up. Because they had not even uh, calculated asbestos abatement that we're going to have to do here in other buildings. Classroom technology, which technology had not given us their final amount. And uh, I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Furniture, security. After what happened in Connecticut in December, we realized that security is a big issue for everybody. And so we're going to address that uh, as the best that we can. And as you well know, the board has approved to hire two new resource officers and allow concealed handgun carry. Dr. Brooks has already got her guns ready to go on both hips. <laughs> She's fired up. We're just going to have to get her trained. <laughs> She'll be like Annie Oak. Uh, phasing and escalation is a whole different, that's a new concept for me because what we deal with on, let's just say for South Elementary, for example, we cannot do that project in one summer. So we're going to have to bring in some portables and we'll move some of the kids out to the portables while we re remodel their classrooms. Once those are done, we move them back in, we'll move another group out in case we have to do that through the whole year, which we know we're going to have to. So let's go to the next. Oh, well, no, stay right there where you are, Nick. Uh, the board approved in December a district facilities committee, and we met four times. You had a representative on that, on that committee, and I believe it's Lucy, right, Lucy? Because you're, yes, you're on the district advisory committee. So everybody on our district advisory committee served on that facility uh, planning committee. We had a representative from each of our board members, and I put five high school kids on there. We need to hear what the kids think and what they want us, what they want us to address and do. Okay, buddy, go ahead and go to the next slide. So the total package that we presented to the board on February the 14th was $39.47 million. That covers everything that we need. It's going to be over a 25-year payback. And why renovations? Well, it's going to touch every kid in Level N ISD, including your kids and your adults right here and your staff. It's going to impact 13 different facilities, including Carver Adult Learning Center. And it's going to maximize the life of our existing building. This is a good building. We just need to upgrade it. We just need to modernize it. And we can get another 20, 25, 30 years out of all of our buildings by renovating and remodeling. 
Now, also, uh, there was one other statement I need to tell you. So the recommendation came from the District Facilities Committee. Lucy served on that. And it was a unanimous vote. We want you to put it all in one package. We don't want you to separate the stadium from the academic facility. Put it all in one. So we appreciated their stance on that. Now this is just, uh, there's some uh, satellite shots that we put in there. Uh, this is the whole city of Leveland in, in respect to where our campuses are. Now we, we did a breakdown on the cost. And we did a bar graph. And all, you can see all 13 facilities right here, including Carver Adult Learning Center. Well, the high school, yeah, it shows a little bit more money. Well, that high school has a lot of needs, and people still say, well, that's a new high school. That high school's 35 years old. It's not the new high school anymore. Uh, and I'll go through these with you. We've got Lobo Stadium. Folks, I'm going to tell you, we've got a problem at Lobo Stadium. And I'll show you pictures that will just absolutely, you won't believe them. And I, I kept telling Mr. Holcomb, we've got problems out there, man. But... I said, we need to get a structural engineer in here to look at this because we have some serious issues, some safety issues. And I'll show you what we found out when we got the architects involved. Carver, Carver is going to get about a $1.2 million package to re uh, remodel your school here. We'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, the next slide is going to just show you how it's all broken down and how we get our $39.470 million. High school at that amount, the Ag Farm, we're going to need to do some upgrades up there. High school field house, Lobo Stadium, middle school, you see Carver, uh, that's uh, 1.195, actually it, I think we've calculated at 1.2 million. Uh, and administration building is just mainly new energy efficient lighting and windows, that's all we're going to do there. And some plumbing issues. Okay, as we go through this, uh, this, this is the additional where we went from 30 down to 30, up to 39 million, and that's why we added another 8 million. We were not through with our initial calculations. <clears throat> okay. Then. Now, people have asked me, well, why don't you just build new? Well, where are we going to build? We don't have the land. We looked at 29 different sites when we settled on the new middle school and new uh, uh, ABC sites. Level in is kind of landlocked. There's so many environmental issues and there's so many underground high pressure lines, gas lines and oil lines, we were limited to where we could build. But we do know for these six facilities right here, including Carver, we can renovate and do what we need to do for about $24 million. If we built all brand new, it would be $100 million. I can't ask the community to do that. They have told us since 2003, we don't want you building any more new buildings, and you better not tear any down. But they'd burn my house down if I tried to tear this building down. Y'all would burn my house down if I tried to tear it. Okay, I wouldn't do it. Now, what we're going to show you is each of these facilities that are going to get remodeled and renovated. This is the high school. We have done a color scheme in here with the architects, and here are the color codes. In other words, everything, everywhere you see the gold color is new ceiling, lights, and paint. Where you see the green is new flooring, ceiling, lights, and paint. Now, from the gold all the way back through this way, including the dark blue and the gray, that's the 1978 edition. That's the, the original high school. The, the light blue is the vocational wing that we built in 1983, and that was built on a bond. This purple color, those are the 12 new classrooms that we built in 1998 when I was high school principal. We moved the ninth grade from the old junior high to the high school. And you see these gray areas? Those are the existing restrooms. Those are the new restrooms on the, on the new classrooms at the high school. The Texas Education Agency came through here two weeks ago and did a monitoring visit. They looked at the high school, they looked at Cactus Academic Center, they looked at the middle school, they looked at the stadium, and they looked at the ag farm. Because those are the facilities where we have career and technology education. And this was mandated by the federal government. And they do 50 school districts a year in Texas. And what they told us was is that we have serious ADA issues here. You've got ADA issues in your restaurant right now, I guarantee you. Anybody with a... Uh, a special needs or handicap cannot use those restrooms. They're not accessible. And that's what they told us. Now, except for these two class uh, restrooms at the high school, everything else 
is in need of accessibility, addressment. Now, however, that set of restrooms right there, which I call the science restrooms, because this is the, what we used to call the science wing, uh, because that's the four existing original science uh, classrooms and labs. Uh, back in September, I had a mama of a ninth grade girl call me. She said, Mr. Baggett, my daughter can't use these restrooms, and her classes are all in this area right here. She's, she's handicapped, she's on a walker, she can't use those restrooms. That little girl is having to walk all the way down here and use those restrooms right there. 75 yards she was having to walk. And that mama didn't tell me that I better do it. I knew I better had to do it. So we spent fund balance money and we renovated and remodeled those two restrooms because of that handicapped girl. So we've got to do that for those restrooms and those also and uh, it, it's in the plan. So you're gonna see these type of codes all the way through here. This is just a, a satellite shot of the high school. We have, we have uh, the 1978 parking lot and that parking lot has just gotten to the point where it's deteriorated beyond repair. We constantly patch and replace potholes because everything off of uh, Alamo all the water, it comes off the east side, it, it flows right down this way on Alamo uh, going north, turns the corner right by the tennis courts and goes by the softball field, and it drains right here in a drainage ditch that runs underneath that practice field over here into that Playa Lake on East Ellis, I'm sorry, uh, Cactus Drive. Everything off of Hickory Street comes right through here, and I'm talking about rainwater or runoff water, it turns the corner and runs right through here. Several years ago, we had to take out all this asphalt and we put concrete in there. That concrete now is just totally deteriorated because of the water. It's like a, it's like a stream, a rapid flowing stream. It just tears up everything in its path. So we're gonna have to go in there and tear all this out, regrade it, re-slope it, repack it, report, re-top it. Gano Tub Gymnasium, we did not, uh, we have not replaced these seats since 1978. Those are the original gym seats. We did put new ones on the bottom section of the uh, home side and also on the visitor side. So we're going to we're going to do this and we're going to redo all of our gym lighting. That that is old halogen bulbs. They're they're not energy efficient. So we'll have to come in on both gyms and put energy efficient lighting in. Same thing with your gym. We'll do we'll do also. We have breaking issues, and we have those here on your on your campus. Uh, where moisture can go through, we've lost the barrier, the water barrier uh, in those areas. We have electrical distribution panel problems everywhere, including here. But this is just another shot of the parking lot, same shot of the parking lot. As well, in your building, we have old uh, rooftop units that serve as heating and air conditioning. Some of those are 30 years old and they need to be replaced just like you have in your building and we'll totally redo this one. So that's, that. you see that for the high school. We're gonna go through these a little quicker. This is the new middle school, that's the new ABC. Well, why do you need to do some work there? Well, I'll tell you, in 19, I mean, in, in uh, 2004, when that bond issue passed to build that new middle school, we had to remove all of this parking right here and we had to remove 300 seats in the theater. We lost all those to get the, the money down where we could afford it. We never did build a track for the kids to work out on. We never did build tennis courts. And right now, right now, our kids who run track in the spring, we have to bus them to the high school every day, every day in fact, over 114, over the railroad tracks. Same thing with our tennis kids. That's a year-long program. We have to bus them every morning to the high school and back. Just today, I got a call from Sandra Riggs. And you know we're getting a lot more train traffic on crossing over there by 114. She told me we had 10 middle school kids who were walking home yesterday afternoon and were going underneath the train. Going underneath it while it was moving. Oh, I nearly, I just nearly, I didn't know what, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. So we deal with issues like that. Uh, so we're going to build new parking, extra parking here at the middle school. But right now, even with the little rivers that you have, you can't find a parking place out there. Right now, they're parking in our grass area. And we do that. We have that problem when they're, the band is performing or the choir or any program, parent night uh, at this school. Uh, so new tennis courts, 
a new workout track for the kids, and new parking at the, at the uh, middle school. We're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking of our irrigation system. Now this is an intermediate campus, the fourth and fifth grade campus. You see the color scheme here, new seating lights and paint, new flooring, ceiling lights and paint in the different color schemes. This is the gymnasium. The gymnasium has never been heated and cooled. It does not have a fire system in there. We're going to need to do that. And we're going to insulate it better. Uh, this is a, just an overview shot of the uh, intermediate. You see all of those rooftop units. Go back to that minute. All of these rooftop units, a lot of them need to be re replaced. Uh, some roofing issues on top. These are the existing original windows when that high school was built. And we cannot keep the sand down. We're going to show you pictures. Look at all the sand. When the sand blows, that's what the classrooms look like. It's horrible. Same thing in my office. I had to get the back of the other day myself and back in there. New energy efficient windows will be, be uh, installed. We're going to totally redo the electrical system. That's an electrical panel that's extremely dangerous. Uh, the auditorium, those are the original seats in that school. If you find one that works, good luck. The, the slope of those aisles are not conducive for anybody in a wheelchair, on a walker, or on crutches. So, our plan is to put new seats in it, re-slope it where people with handicaps can get down here and, and be a seat in, sit in a handicapped seat or they can sit in the back. Uh, we did spend about $150,000 two years ago. We redid the lighting system in the auditorium and we put in a new sound system. That, that is the best auditorium we have at Level NISD. Okay, go to this one. Uh, this is Cactus Academic Center. Uh, where our alternative education programs are. Uh, we're gonna do, we've got to get those restrooms ADA accessible. All of these gray area, which are restrooms, have to be ADA accessible. We're going to have to do an extensive amount of plumbing in those areas. Uh, these are the existing windows. We'll come back with energy efficient windows, tinted, double paned. These restrooms are going to have to be totally redone. All of them. Carpeting issues, just like you have in your building. If you take that carpet up, there's going to be asbestos underneath it. It's going to have to be abated. Not only the tile, but the glue that holds it down. We have serious roofing issues, as you can see here at Cactus. You're going to have the same problem. Okay. Captain Elementary. This is the school that we renovated uh, back in April 2010 through that summer. And this is the front yard on the south side. We have a water well there. We're going to put some underground irrigation in there. We're going to put underground irrigation system on your campus too. Uh, the back side, we have a water well here. We'll underground sprinkler system that. We totally renovated this whole academic area, including the cafeteria, the gymnasium. We had to shut it down back in 2008 because a windstorm came through and it pressurized it up and it blew the north wall out. So we had to shut it down. It was not, we couldn't use it with kids. We did not put energy efficient windows in because we just didn't have enough money to do that. They, they have the same problem with sanding issues. So we'll put new energy efficient windows in cap. Uh, there's going to be underground irrigation to upgrade the site, the grass, get it growing again, hopefully. Uh, the restrooms, we, uh, we've got to do something about these urinals right here. Those are not legal and we didn't change those out originally on the, uh, on the original renovation. We have ADA accessibility issues uh, for handicap parking. Uh, we're going to spend about $975,000 at capital. That's the plan. In addition, we'll put the awning out in the front that's, that's ready to go. We just didn't, didn't have the money to do it at that time. Carver Learning, Adult Learning Center. Here you are. And look at all your rooftop units and your roofing issues. And we're, we're going to take care of all that for you. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. I'm going to be honest with you. I've had people say, why are you going to spend money on carpet? And my answer is this. That is a very important school. It is a very important program. They educate adults. They keep kids. They help raise kids and groom kids. I'm telling you, if you go to one of their GED graduations, you will be heartwarmed. And I told them, I tell them, I said, I went to a graduation back in December, and I think we had over 20 adults graduate. And I said, that's the most heartwarming thing I've ever seen. 40, 
year old adults getting their GED, they give that gives them a chance to go to the next step in their education or vocational. Carver is important to level in ISD. And I mean that, Dr. Brooks. New, you'll get new energy efficient windows. And look at your, well, that's not even grass, but look at your yard. <laughs> and we're going to put you an underground sprinkler system in there. You've got bricking issues. I was looking at it when I walked in a while ago. I thought, oh, man. All of your restrooms are going to be redone, upgraded, modernized, ADA accessible. We'll address all of your classrooms with new painting, new carpet, new lighting. And we're going to spend about $1.2 Now, let me go through this a little bit more in detail. You'll get all new electrical distribution and branch panels. And that's, that's, pretty, that's above my head, okay? Uh, you're going to get a new fire alarm system. You're going to get a new security system. We'll put you in a buzz-in intercom system where people who want to come in, they're going to have to go to the main entrance and push a button. And then you'll be monitoring them, Lucy or somebody, and then you'll let them in. Uh, you will have what's called a key fob, or your, take your ID, you swipe it, it opens the door up for you. And that's done with a buzz-in intercom security system. You'll get surveillance cameras in your school where you'll, you'll be able to see what's going on in the hallways and etc. Uh, you're going to get new heating and air conditioning in this building, new ductwork, new exterior windows. We're going to do some brick masonry repairs. Accessible restrooms for folks who have needs of those accessibility areas. Now, I told you site irrigation, classroom improvements, new ceilings, new lighting, new paint, and new flooring. You're an important part of this bond issue, folks. Now, South Elementary, uh, it's uh, very similar to Capital. Uh, and I will tell you, this is the gymnasium. Those gymnasiums, we had four elementaries at one time before we sold West Early Childhood. Those gyms were built in 1972. And what we did, I noticed the Capitol, if you, you, you may not realize this, but on Capitol, their gym faces uh, runs north and south. But on the south end, they've got a music room, a music classroom that was built on back in the, I don't know why they didn't do it at the other school, but they didn't. These are, these are four portables that we currently use as either storage or classrooms. Now that one burned down uh, last summer. And, uh, this is our current music room. I'll show it to you in just a moment. So here's what we want to do at South. I asked the architects, uh, you know, color scheme. You know, we're going to do basically the same thing we did at Capitol and we're going to do here. But I said, you know, we have enough room on this east side of that gym. Let's put us in a music room. Let's build a music classroom. So they don't have to use a portal. So that's, that's part of this plan. And you can see it right here. We'll get rid of, hopefully, these portables. I don't know if we can get rid of all of them because we need the storage. But... We're going to get rid of the music room. So let's kind of go through South and show you what it looks like. This is the existing windows. They're not insulated all the way around it. Uh, go back, Nick, please. The upper area here needs to be cleaned up. Uh, and it, once again, the next picture is going to show you the sanding issues that we, de we deal with when the sand blows. Did y'all get sand in your windows here? <laughs> I'm figuring this is what the new windows will look like with a cleaned up upper area. Energy efficient double pane tinted windows. This is the gymnasium. I went over there during spring break and I discovered that this south wall right here has moved out a little bit on us. It's got a bulge, so we've got a problem there. This is what their gym will look like. This is Capitol Gymnasium. Brand new. We took it all apart except for the, the, the roof and the concrete pad and the support beams right there, but we dressed them up. We, we put new heating and cooling in it. We put uh, real nice padded walls all the way around it, new sport court flooring, new basketball goals that can be raised up and down for different heights. Uh, we, uh, we totally redid that gymnasium, and it's just absolutely fabulous. We redid the music room, the coach's office, and the restrooms are ADA accessible. <coughs> You know, I'm embarrassed for anybody, especially our children, to go use restrooms at South, or right? even over here. They have the same issue you do. Uh, plumbing backs up. It's just filthy. Nasty. We're going to do some site work here, too. We'll do some site irrigation. That, go back there. This is the uh, music room. We had to build that ramp because we had a little fellow that uh, had a handicap issue and so we, we built that ramp for them last year. 
rooftop units that are in bad shape along with the roofing that needs to be done. This is an electrical panel over there that, that we're going to have to address all through south just like here. So at south we'll do basically the same thing that we're going to do for you. Now I want to talk to you about Lobo Stadium. I'm going to show you some really graphic pictures. Lobo Stadium has been a, a point of contention for a long time and I've, I've been really worried about it. But this is just an overhead shot from a satellite. This is the Vistas uh, concession stand restroom. Vistas uh, stands, the uh, field house as it sits now. Home side stands with a real small press box. And then with, this is the uh, home side restrooms and concession stand. Coming off the field house is a, is a ramp that's not ADA accessible. We have concrete deterioration all the way around it. And as we go through these pictures, you're going to see we are just very, very close to having that stadium condemned beyond use because of the deterioration in it. This stadium is 75 years old, y'all. We have this kind of problem all underneath our seat supports. They're rusting and they're coming apart. And they can't be repaired. They cannot be fixed. You see the concrete deterioration? That's the, the support system underneath. Look at that. It's total separation of the, con the 75 year old concrete. We same thing here, we have deterioration. We have uh, mismatched uh, step heights that uh, off of this old system, uh, the old 75 year old stadium, and then they some at some time they came back in and built that upper section and everything was mismatched. It's a trip hazard. It's against the law. Deterioration all the way through this concrete that's 75 years old. Same thing here. That is a support beam for a, uh, a large support beam, and you see the concrete, how it's coming apart. This is a light pole that's coming up off the, uh, the pad and off of the concrete base. That's one of the restrooms we deal with. When TEA came through here the other day, I took them over there. They looked at this restroom. They looked at those, and they said, those are illegal. I said, I know they're illegal. So, we have got to address these restrooms. They're not ADA accessible. That stadium is totally unaccessible to anybody with a handicap. Same thing with the concession stand. This is the home side. Look at the deterioration on the support system. Right here is the same thing, same issue. The press box would burn down in 2003, I believe, around June the 1st. I was umpiring a baseball game in Snyder, and on the way back I got a call. They said the press box just burned, the old one. And so we came back with insurance money and, and built this one. And we, we could not enlarge it. We couldn't do anything else with it. We did get a waiver from the Texas Department of License and Regulation not to have to put an elevator on it. We just didn't, we didn't have the ability to do that. And so they, they said, okay, since you built it for less than, it's supposed to be under 400 square feet. We built it under a little less than 500. So we didn't have to put an elevator in it. But we were lucky we didn't have to. If if a newspaper person from another town wants to get up here in this press box, we have no way to get them up there if they have a handicap. Federal law says they have the right to tell everybody else up there that's working with newspapers from Leveland, you come down to where I'm at because I can't get up there where you are. If we have visiting coaches who need to get to the press box and they can't get up there due to a disability, they tell our coaches, you come down here. And they have the right to do that. Again, we see deterioration in the stadium. This is the field house. Uh, I don't know if that field house is 75 years old, but I guarantee it's nearly 50. Uh, we deal with just unsightly issues in here. We've been told by teams who want to consider us for playoffs, we won't come to level in. Your field's nice, but your stands are horrible, and we won't have our kids dressing in that field house. That's the Vista shower. This is what the new field will look like. This is the architectural drawing. New field house, that will be simply dressing rooms, an official dressing room, a training room for uh, the trainers from our, from our school as well as the visiting school to treat kids. The visitor stand will be about 1,000 seats, maybe 1,100. Um, the home side, we're going to add some more seats, it'll be about 2,500. We'll put a new press box up there with an elevator, which we'll have to do. A new concession stand area with uh, more than adequate restrooms on the north end that can serve both sides and that will be ADA accessible. 
we will put artificial turf on the field. And I'm going to tell you something, folks, in West Texas, we're just, we're, it's just almost imperative that we all have to do this. Water is such a precious commodity now. We're, sp we're watering it right now, trying to get our grass ready to grow, and we're fertilizing now. We spend anywhere from $65,000 to $90,000 a year on that field, just maintaining it. <clears throat> we can pay for that turf in eight years by not having to water it and maintain it. We'll, put, we'll take that old red track out and we'll asphalt it so our kids will be able to not have to worry about stepping on big rocks. And Now, we're not going to make this a running track. We don't, it doesn't have enough room to do that. It's not big enough for a six-lane track, much less an eight-lane. And Liz will tell you, <coughs> her kid runs track. Eight-lane tracks are a mandatory. <coughs> we don't have the room to do that. So we're going to asphalt it. We still run at South Plains College. We work out at the high school. <coughs> Thank goodness we have a, a great partnership with South Plains College. Okay, I want to talk to you now real quick and show you how it's going to affect all of us as taxpayers, including me. <coughs> so we're going to go through this quickly. If you're 65 or older, you can file with the Hockley County Appraisal District for a homestead exemption. I just turned 65 in February. I went down and I filed for that exemption. However, because I turned 65 after December 31st, this won't, my, my taxes won't be frozen. I'll, I'll see this increase on my, my taxes next year. <clears throat> and that's okay. Uh, so in other words, if you pay $325 in school taxes uh, and you were granted the exemption, your school taxes should not go up more than 325 Now, there's a little bit of a... Uh, a glitch in that, not maybe a glitch, not the right word, but there's a little bit of an explanation. I'm going to let Nick talk to you about that in just a moment. But this is the form that you can fill out. And what we did, we went ahead and uh, we did some some, evaluate, some evaluations on property. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Williams did this for us. Uh, you take a $25,000 home, and we did that all the way up to, to $200,000. If you've got a snow cone stand and it's worth $25,000, you're going to be taxed on that snow cone stand. Not what you make, just the property. So in other words, if you've got a $25,000 home and the state gives you a $15,000 exemption, you're going to be taxed on $10,000. And over the life of our bonds, you're going to pay $1.13 a month increase in your taxes. You can't go to McDonald's and get a Coke every day for that. Now, if it's not your homestead where you live, lay your head down every night, say it's rental property, you're going to see a $2.81 increase in your taxes if it's rental property. There are a lot of people who live in have rental property. So we, we go all the way through this. Now, on this side of the homestead over 65, if, you, if this is your homestead and you're over 65 and you have filed for the exemption, now, note, note this, the asterisk right up there. This assumes that LISD property tax levy for 2012 is equal to the tax ceiling. In other words, when we refinanced our bonds last year on the new schools, our taxes went down a little bit. Okay? But if, if this passes and you're over 65, you're going to see that come right back to where you were originally frozen. Is that right, Nick? So we need to let everybody know that, you know, because somebody might come back and say, well, you told me my taxes won't come back up. It, it's not going to go over what you were frozen at when you filed, okay? All right, so we go all the way through this scenario with 50000 You can see that. If you have a $50,000 home and it's where you live, you're going to see a, a, and I think my little clicker here dying out on you. You got a new one? That's better. Hold on a second. Nick's got so many of these pointers. That was better. All right. Sorry. Our battery's running down. There we go. If this is your uh, primary home, you'll see a $3.94 a month increase. $3.94. If it's your rental property, you'll see $5.63 a month increase over the last span. If you're 65 or older, you're not going to see any increase unless it applies down here and it wouldn't be that much anyway. I don't know what it could calculate out, but it would be very, uh, you know, who knows? It won't be very, 
because you can't take it more than what you were frozen at to start with. The average home in Leveland is $85,044. That homeowner will see a $7.89 increase on their taxes per month, or 26 cents a day. Non-homestead property, $957.65 or older, it's not going to affect them any at all, or maybe a little bit. So we go all the way up to, to 150, we go up to 200,000. And for a $200,000 home, you're going to look at a $20.83 uh, increase in your taxes. I can't take my wife out to eat once a month for that cheap. Can't go low, can't even level in that cheap once a month. Okay, now, here's some important dates for you, okay? April 11th, today is the last day to register to vote. And where do they register? They register at the county courthouse. You can post. You can get it in the postmark today. If you get it postmarked today, uh, it w it can go in and can be counted. If you haven't registered to vote, I encourage you to do that because you can't vote in this election if you haven't registered. Now we have some important dates here. Early voting will be at City Hall at April 29th and 30th, Monday and Tuesday. The polls will open at 7 a.m. and close at 7 p.m., so you've got plenty of time to go down there before you come to work or when you get off work. On May the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, that's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the polls are open from 8 to 5, and then on May 6th and 7th, the following Monday and Tuesday, then they'll be open from 8 to 5 at City Hall. On Saturday, May the 11th, that is the general election day. That'll be for the school board uh, election. We have two board members up for election, and we have two incumbents running and two uh, opponents. That's going to be at the boardroom at, at Level N ISD Central Office from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I encourage you, if you're going to vote, vote early. That way, if you get something happen on Saturday and you can't go vote, you've already done it. You've already taken care of it. I can't tell you how to vote, folks. I'm not telling you how to vote. I can't do it by law. All I can do is present the facts of this bond proposition. and I, All I can do is tell you what we need and why we need it. You work in a building every day that needs remodeling and renovated, right? I agree with you. Well, that concludes our, our presentation. Do you have any questions or comments? Or, and Dr. Brooks, thank you all so much for letting us come out here and make we this presentation. It. You're welcome. Uh, and the city of Leveland, we've had elections where one vote made a difference. So if you think your vote is not important or those that you come in contract, Please emphasize that their, their votes are important, and uh, because they are, they're people who've died, so that we got that privilege. So I, I always take it very seriously that we, uh, you probably have relatives who fought and died for our country. That's one of the critical things about the United States that's different, and we just encourage you and encourage you and those you come in contact with for you to vote as well. So we thank you for your time today.